All right, so I just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, I see a lot of guys repasting and uh, their temperatures end up worse after they do it or they don't get the results that other people get or, um, you know, they've never done it before. I just wanted to go through real quick how to do it, things to look for. Hopefully this helps people not run into some of the issues that are common that other people run into. Um, even if you've repasted a bunch before, maybe you'll get something from this you didn't know before. Uh, I hope it helps. First thing you want to do, get in there. Make sure you clean them really good. Like, uh, I know some people say it doesn't really matter if you're cleaning around the pins, but I like to make sure clean it out real good because the longer you leave the paste there, the more dry it gets. It becomes more of a pain to clean up later. So it's just easier to get it all done, you ain't gotta worry about it, and then you got a nice clean paste there. If you're doing liquid metal and you're planning on covering these uh, with tape or something, I don't recommend you do that. Um, because, like, uh, let me see this. Let me see if it focus. Come on. All right, so this little bit of plastic was over the pins on the GPU. You can see how the paste got trapped under there. And this is all from factory, this isn't from me, so. This piece of plastic that came from factory leaked inside the pin. So if you had liquid metal here and you had tape on it and you put your own tape on it, get in there. The problem is, the only point of adhesion you have is this little tiny gap in between your die and your pins for the tape to stick to. That's not a lot. And then it comes up, you know what I mean, and it sticks to the pins and then it goes back down and has better adhesion out here. But for this little tiny area right here, there isn't a lot and you've got a lot of heat and fluctuations in the metal and a lot of things happening here that your liquid metal can seep underneath and get trapped underneath the, the tape if it comes undone and then it's stuck right there in your pins and fry it. So that's why I don't recommend that. That's why I made another video, I use nail polish, or I've seen uh, people use conformal coating uh, just to kinda protect your pins when you're putting liquid metal on there, but I'm not doing liquid metal this time. I'm just gonna do thermal paste. And um, let's see. There's a lot of different methods people have for putting paste on a laptop die. It's not like a desktop where you just put some paste in the middle, you put your heat spreader on, and then you're good to go. Laptops, the entire die has gotta be covered corner to corner. So it's a little bit more tricky if you're just putting some down and letting the heat spreader spread it. Because like I said, it's gotta cover every inch of this, every little bit. What I recommend people do is get an applicator. Like this came with the Thermal Grizzly. Okay, so you can see it's got in there. Uh, just to spread it out evenly across the whole thing. Laptops are a little different. If someone says something about air gap bubbles or whatever, just ignore them. Just do what I tell you. You're putting it on. You don't need a lot. If you get extra spills out in your pins, it doesn't matter, as long as it's not conductive. But most thermal paste is not, unless it's liquid metal, or conductive not. But um, despite what you think, this, this surface here, on the GPU and on CPU, is not 100% smooth. It looks really smooth and it's like a mirror, but it's actually rough, like you get down to like a microscopic level. And then plus, you also got your copper is not 100% smooth. I don't know if you can see. Little lines in it all over, and that's all from factory. That's not from me. This is how they're machined. But anyways, the point of thermal paste is that you can't put metal on metal because it's not a seamless gap. There's uh, divots and ruts in it all over. So the paste kind of fills in all those little gaps and creates a good transition between the die, the heat plate, in order to carry out the heat from your system. So that being said, the only amount that you need 
is just to get that adhesion between the two. So you do not need much when you're putting it on there. Now what I like to do is after I've applied it, oh man, is I'll stick something over the top, like a pen or my applicator, and I'll see if I can see the reflection anywhere. And that means that I don't have enough. If I can't see the reflection, I'll show you in a second. If I can't see the reflection, then I'm good. I didn't add that much. I've actually got a lot on my applicator, I'll show you. But just barely enough to cover it so that you don't see the mirror part of the dye. You can see, I didn't even put it all on there. But anyways, just enough to get it covered. And then what I do is I'll, I'll look, have a light coming down on top and then I'll run this over the top like this, I won't touch it, but I'll just go like this and I'll look. And if I see it reflecting anywhere on the dye, then I know that that spot's too thin. And I'll add a little more, I'll spread it out. But that's fine. I mean, yeah, I got a little bit out on the outside and all over, whatever. It doesn't matter. Unless you're a perfectionist, then you can take the extra time. And then, if you have extra on your applicator like I do every time, you can just spread it out. Pepper your thing, I actually add a little bit. That's probably too much, whatever. Just so that you're sure you're getting that adhesion between the two. Real simple. If you don't have like a little applicator, I've seen guys use old credit cards or a library card, whatever. And uh, there you go, that's it, that's all you do. Now, let me show you why. Actually, I have a little glass plate here. Let me show you why I recommend spread. I gotta clean all this crap up. It's a waste of some good paste right there. Anyway, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to show you what I mean. So when you put paste on, right? You're gonna to wanna to do it like you do in a bunch of, you watch on YouTube. This is what people do. They put it like that, and then they call it a day. They put their heat spread around it. But if you look, you've gotta have this entire thing. Okay. I got a little glass plate here. I'm gonna show you how to spread this. I saw somebody do this on a desktop, I thought it was really sick. So, when you're putting your heat plate on, it's also really important that you don't have it at an angle and you're not like fitting it and then like letting it fall because as you fit it and let it fall, it'll push the paste that way and it may not spread on the back side and just towards the one side. I'm not gonna show that, I'm just gonna show how it spreads. So let's say you put it down straight down. And you do it just how you're supposed to. You get it off this chip. All right. So even if I push it down, I've got no resistance. All right. And I pushed it down pretty good. You can see how on these edges right here in these corners, it's not covered. And I have nothing in my way right now. I'm just right on top of it. And still, even with that, with all the force on it, I'm still not hitting these corners. And that's what is so difficult about letting the heat spreader do this. And I've seen people do the X method, where they run, paste, I'm not saying that's 
you know, putting the heat plate on, you're not gonna get enough spread, it's not gonna work. Sometimes it will, sometimes you're good. Like some people they do the, which I think would probably be the best way, the X method. So that way, that's terrible, but you get the idea. Put the X on there. And then when you put the plate on, you're hitting those corners. You know what I mean? I probably didn't add enough. We'll see. Now, you see that? Look at that. That's not bad. So it got all the corners. So that's good. The X method works. There you go. But I always just found it better to be the, the spread because then you you know for sure. And you're not taking it apart three, four times trying to get it just right. I'd rather just do it once. If I'm taking apart everything, I don't want to make a night of it. I want to make an hour of it. Now here's the next thing. This is really important. This is the main reason I'm making this video. Number one. The most important part of when you're repasting a laptop is not how you apply the paste. That's important too. But the most important is your thermal pads. And I'll explain why. This is a Predator 15, and you can see on my heat plate, it's got, well, let me get just, it's got these screws that are spring-loaded. And the way these are engineered provide the perfect amount of tension, so once you tighten these screws all the way down, they don't turn anymore. That screw is applying just enough pressure that they've engineered into it to make it sit down. The only thing holding this plate off your board are these pads. And that's why you'll see when you take your pads off, you'll see like indentions around where the chips are. If you take all these pads off and you put this plate on, you tighten it on, you're gonna have metal to metal. The pads are what give you your spacing, especially on a laptop. It's not engineered perfectly to sit at that perfect height. Or some of them might, but this one isn't. Commonly it's not. And then here, I think I have, you know I have it somewhere. All right, so as a perfect example, the Helios 300 2017, 2018. This, you can see, doesn't have those retention screws of tension. These are just like, they just bend around the chip. And 100%, this is critical to have these thermal pads, the correct size and to not be over tightened because you'll squish them. When you squish them, you'll get metal to metal contact. And these pads have already been used once and they've been sitting there. So by the time you're repacing, it's been a year, they've already conformed to their chips. They're already squished a little bit from the 1.5 millimeter, whatever they are, when you first got it on there. So you don't need to over tighten it. I see a lot of guys, they put it back on, they tighten the crap out of it and then it squishes these pads even more. And then you don't have your proper spacing. So when you put it on, you got your heat plate on, especially ones like this. You tighten it and just barely get it snug. Like once you start feeling resistance and you know that screw is not gonna unturn itself. Once you just get to that point, stop. You don't wanna squish the pads. You want them to just sit there right where they were because they're already conformed to it. Now if you've got new pads, and you go and you want to replace all these and you get brand new pads, yeah, you're gonna to want to tighten them a bit, but not that much because as you can see, they can form, they squish, but I'm, if you put a brand new pad up next to this, I don't have any new next to me. If you put a brand new pad up there, it probably wouldn't be much different, but it would be a little. Anyways, a couple last things. If you're checking your spread you don't want to remove your heat plate to look at it and then just put it back. Every time you remove it, you got to repaste it because that will create air bubbles. You don't want that because then that'll cause all kinds of issues. Another thing is 
See, a lot of people, they freak out because their unit won't turn on. What they do is they hook everything up and put it all back together, but they don't put the bottom of the chassis back together. And they flip it over and they try to turn it on. It won't turn on. They think they broke it, but it's not. Like right here on this one, there's a little ram, uh, switch, usually next to the ram, that needs to be depressed in order for the unit to turn on. So unless you've got that plate cover back on, you may think you broke it, but you didn't. This little switch right here cuts the power. And uh, I know I made another video where I used the rice method. I'm telling you guys in this video, I used the spread method, but in the other one, I used the rice method. I've done this a bunch. I'm like a machine, so I know how to do it just right. But if you're new to this or you don't want to have to try it a bunch of times to get it right, the spread method works just fine every single time. Um, there'll be no issues there. So hopefully this video helps someone uh, not have a bunch of headaches and get it right the first time. Thanks for watching and uh, enjoy.